Welcome to the J Squared Horror Podcast, where two lifelong horror fans talk all things horror. Pour yourself your favorite drink and hang out. Here are your hosts, Josh and Jake. Hey guys, welcome to the J Squared Horror Podcast. I'm Josh. And I'm Jake. And on today's episode, we are going to be discussing... 2023's Evil Dead Rise, directed by Lee Cronin. And I think the tagline should be, Mommy Don't Play. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Before we get into the episode, what would we like to let anyone new to our channel know? As always, please like and subscribe on YouTube. Click those buttons, comment, do everything. You can also find us on Spotify. Yep. We're on Apple. We are. As well as Google. Mm-hmm. Also on Instagram, J Squared Horror Podcast. Link tree in the bio. New episode every Thursday. Every Thursday, two lifelong horror fans decide to get together and talk all things horror. With this podcast, we would like to open up lines of communication between all styles of fans of horror. All styles of horror fans. All of them. <laughs> all of them. And uh, just basically uh, insert ourselves into different situations involve our fans and our in our humble opinions this is the most original horror podcast out there <laughs> we kind of do it our way and we just have a lot of fun doing it so hopefully you guys can join in and some of the fun that we have with the mention of the link tree in the bio i would also like to mention two other things one of those things being paranormalitymagazine.com paranormality magazine is an up-and-coming magazine about all things strange unusual and paranormal they are super cool. They've been super friendly to us. If you use code J2Horror at checkout, you get 10% off of any purchase. That includes magazine subscriptions or merchandise. With that, you can also vote for us being the number one podcast. Last issue, we came in at number eight. We would like to be a lot higher than that. So if you go to their website, vote for us. We would like to be higher than the top five. That would be super duper cool. We're number one. That would be cool. Top five would be really cool, but one would be amazing if you guys could do that for us. Also, www.jsquaredhorrorpodcast.com. That is the easiest way to communicate with Jake or myself. If you have an episode idea, if you're interested on your stuff being covered on our podcast, if you just want to say, hey, you guys are great, and you don't want to comment on YouTube, or if you just listen to us on audio and you don't quite know how to comment, you can share anything there. Um, Any upcoming events or anything like that is on there. But now, let's get into Evil Dead Rise. I We saw this in theater together. We did. We did. As you guys know, throughout the time of the J-Squared Horror Podcast, this guy is hard to get out of the house. <laughs> He's a busy guy. Our schedules don't always line up. I am so, very busy. Yeah, so when we do get to see a horror flick together, it's uh, we've, we've seen some pretty good ones. Oh, we have, yeah. I feel like we've seen some of the better ones. We've seen some shitty ones. But <laughs> we've definitely seen some great ones. Yeah. I will say that me and my friend Veda saw by far the worst, which was Infinity Pool that we walked out of. So we've never walked out of a movie together. Yeah, we came close, though. We did come close in a uh, convention. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> other than uh, sweating in a theater that doesn't have AC, um, how would you feel about this experience of uh, Evil Dead? Loved it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like we mentioned last episode, yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of the franchise. Yeah. This is, to me... The best movie of the franchise. This is your favorite of the entire favorite franchise. One. Yeah. So obviously beats out the one we covered last week. If yeah. you guys haven't listened yet, 2013 Evil Dead, we covered last week. Come back to this one. Also, if you guys haven't seen the movie yet, we will be spoiling shit, obviously. If you know anything about the J Squared Horror Podcast, we don't care. We spoil. Spoilers. Spoilers. Um, yeah, it is it's a good one. I, I don't I don't know if it's my favorite out of the entire series. What do you think is your favorite then? I think the original, based really? on just like the original, okay. like this because, like so when I saw the original, uh, I wasn't into horror at all. I was young, and uh, I was actually uh, it was one of my mom's friends. I was crashing over it, like the, we were all there, uh-huh. and I had to stay the night there. And he was like, "Hey, have you ever seen Evil Dead?" And I was like, "Definitely not." Like I'm like <laughs> nine. <laughs> I was probably like 10 or 11, and uh, he was like, dude, this is one of my favorite movies, and he was like a lead singer of a band, so this guy was like super cool in my opinion, Yeah. and uh, he was like, dude, you've got to watch this movie, he was like, there's this tree thing that happened, so like, sorry, 
And I was like, oh, wait, wait, nothing crazy can be happening with trees. Yeah, just a tree. Yeah, <laughs> I was very wrong. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> but yeah, so the Evil Dead, uh, the original kind of does have a special place in my heart. But as far as like movie quality and like uh, scares and like all that stuff, it this definitely is, yeah. goes to Evil Dead this Rise. Is far superior. Like if you're just going movie versus movie, you're right. This is the, the best one in the in the franchise for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so this one is, is I think one of the craziest it's, it starts off amazing. I think I mentioned this, uh, last week slightly, uh, the title cards in the evil dead, I think are untouched Yeah, in the last two for sure. So 2013 and evil dead rise. This one, <laughs> holy fuck. It's just like right out the gate. Just crazy yeah it puts you right into it yeah which i love yeah and i like that with this i guess cold open technically um oh okay yeah you don't really you already know something's up when she says she's not feeling well she hasn't been right since she's gotten here Mm -hmm. but we skip through having to see her yeah we don't possessed we don't have to deal with all that shit right in there that could have been a movie in itself they could have I mean, technically it was, I yeah. guess, but it's in a movie. <laughs> it all comes full circle. So yeah. It's come full circle. Um, what about, dude, so there's a there's a crazy scene. Remember, spoilers, guys. Um, from this point on, you're fucked if you haven't seen the movie. Um, <laughs> there's a part where the friend grabs the ponytail of the girl and fucking scalps her. Loved it. And I was like, oh, we're in. We're like, buckle in, ladies and gentlemen. This movie's about to be intense. And like, if that's in the in the cold open or yeah. the, the title card, yeah. somebody getting scalped. Like, in 2013, you got, like, a... Yeah, she says some crazy shit, and you have, like, her burned, which is like, okay, cool. Yeah. Like, that's pretty intense. But then you get other kills, too. It's like, dude man gets his head ripped off in the water somehow, and then she fucking floats out of the water all possessed demon like i love that when she's floating up and you see the actual title card like yeah then it's fucking evil dead rise rise. yeah Yeah. oh my god it was so good good. so you know based off of that like this movie is either going to be the fucking greatest or it won't be any better than (laughs) this fucking couple of minutes we just got which is a a slight fear wouldn't you say like you start off with something that good you're like Oh fuck! What, is yeah. this gonna is this gonna completely piss me off because yeah. the title card is gonna be the best part? Yeah, I think, yeah this is gonna maintain. Yeah, can it keep this type of like intensity? And it does. It does. Yeah. It it brings you in nicely. And so the cool thing about this is the the title card part is like cabiny. It's like at a lake, and it's what's cool is I don't know what I'm gonna have to look up this. And if anybody knows, you can comment down below. What's up with triangular buildings? Becoming yeah. like a thing in horror. I, I Do I not know that? Like, is it something that I'm missing? So if yeah. anybody knows the correlation between triangle, because Midsommar, this, and there's some other ones that have like triangular shaped buildings. Because the cabin in this one was a triangular shaped cabin. Did you mention that in the theater? I think I did. Yeah, I think you did actually. I yeah. think I did. Yeah. Well, because remember, I got in trouble. Yeah, for talking <laughs> for too much. For talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> Which, hey, the podcast host talks too much? <laughs> Fucking surprise. What are the chances? <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are the chances I annoy some people around me? <laughs> oh, ooh, it's <was> pretty high. <laughs> um, but the cool thing about the movie Evil Dead Rise is that it's not a cabin. It's not the fucking normal every other one. I mean, I don't really count three like Evil Dead 3, The Army of Darkness, I think it's called. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah Army, Army of Darkness is <laughs> on my TV over here. Yeah. <laughs> Army of Darkness, because I fucking hate that movie. I hate it. It's, it's, yeah, I, that's my I least, don't like my it. Least favorite. It's my least favorite. I get that they were trying to be different, cool, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so I think that one's like back in time or something where like Ash. Yeah, travels back and starts having to fight yeah. some deadites and shit. But Boo. I, I, uh, the ones that count, this is the only one not based in a cabin. Yeah. It's very, uh, I don't know the word, urban. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. very urban and it's very modernized. Modern and urban. Yeah, this is it's like cool. Right now, if this were to happen, yeah. and you see that throughout the movie. Yeah, as far as. The way they summon the demon. Yeah, everything like that. Yeah, yeah. it's a fucking record player. Which yeah. I would. I probably would. I would be guilty of that. I'm that, not gonna lie. When they so let's get in there, man. Yeah. So that 
<laughs> that point right there, when they... So you have an earthquake that sets all this up. Yeah. But then it opens a tomb underneath yeah. their building. Un- which used to be a bank. It used to be a bank. So they're, they're, they're not like, it's not far-fetched, yeah. which was cool. Like yeah. they cover, it's, it's amazing how quickly they could cover their ass with that being mentioned. Like a girl mentions ghost because it used to be a bank. And then now you know, like you're, yeah. you're fucking set up. Yeah. No wasted dialogue, no wasted back scenes, no. nothing. Used to be a bank, say it was haunted. <laughs> someone, someone hung themselves here. Boom. Now you're already set up that crazy shit can happen. So the fact that a hole in the ground comes up, and you're in a bank all of a sudden, it makes sense. And it makes sense that yeah. the, the, a kid in that situation is going to be curious. I would be. I, I hated that, though. I would be curious, though. I'm like, dude. What if you found a billion dollars in there? You knew it was a bank. So if that floor opens up, I'm fucking I hopping right like down there. If, Especially if I have people up top that can get me out. Oh, I yeah. feel like if that's your intention... You know, it used to be a bank. Yeah. He opened up a couple of the, what are those things, um, security boxes? Yeah, security deposit yeah. boxes or whatever, yeah. A couple of those, find some money, I'm gone. Once I start seeing the shit hanging up and the, Oh, yeah, it is quick. It's very quick. Where it's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I would have jumped in there, but I'm going to read that fucking yeah. room, baby. I'm, I'm going to a, a vault? <laughs> I'm going to check for some cash real quick and okay. I'm getting out of there. I'm done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the the son, one of the one of the kids of the the main group of yeah. people here, um, finds a crazy looking book. Was it this one wasn't wrapped or anything? Correct. It was like in a tomb. Yeah. But it wasn't like in 2013. It was that was the barbed wire trash bag, right? It's just laying out. It's just kind of there, and but it looks saw crazy. The teeth. The teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Which I thought was pretty good so it's not the same necronomicon yeah and just, they don't ever call it a necronomicon in this movie it's simply the book of the dead yeah which is i didn't mind i hadn't either i did that's, that's what it is yeah and necronomicon i'm i'm just happy i can say it so clearly that's why i say it this much i feel like if you're just some rando who finds his book you're not gonna know what it's called anyway. but also the the priest in it calls it the book of the dead they didn't know either i guess they i mean i'm not sure which which ones that is oh but did oh no go ahead, go ahead. are you going fun fact i am i was gonna say it so i'm gonna let you have it okay so let the, let the people know fun fact <laughs> let, let the fans know during the recording mm-hmm. she lis- he listens to yep um one of the voices mm-hmm. of the priest or one of the priests is bruce campbell yep yep yeah. the original ash yeah. his cameo in this is a is a random side priest he's not, he's not even the main priest i don't yeah, think i he's think not. he's just like one that randomly yells something yeah out. he says something like um it's called the book of the death for yeah, a reason like, something like yeah, that yells yeah. something yeah. out like that um although that part when they he starts listening to it gave me chills okay so let's get into that because out of anybody in the podcast here uh i would yep i would i would fuck us over man I would. What do you mean? So let's just, you know, say I, I somehow get a collection of vinyl, right? Okay. I don't know if you guys know this about me. Fans of the Jay's Great Horror Podcast out there. I am a collector. I'm an avid collector of vinyl. You are? I yeah. love, I have a nice record player. Jake can attest for how many fucking <laughs> vinyl I have over here. Um, I, I love it. And I've also gone in people's attics and like I've found random records. And I'll play them, even if they're not, you know, labeled or anything like that, because you never know what could be in there. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, I feel like, just like this kid who wanted to be a DJ and was, like, really into trying things, uh, I would have played it. I also wouldn't have probably let it go on that long, nor did I know that if I, like, pressed down on it, I could slow it down to hear it clearly. My record player has three different speeds. I don't think I would run into that. Yeah, he like was taking his finger. You, yeah, you slow it down so you then can like, hear it correctly. Just like, and it's like, yeah. And that's the part that got me. <laughs> it's creepy, dude. If I, it's eerie. If I came over here one day. Yeah, like, hey, hey Jake. And I walk in. <laughs> and the first thing I hear is. We will now commence the reading. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> we will now commence the and I'm like Jake and I'm like holding it down, like looking at you. <laughs> I, got a, right I got a book around. of teeth and skin just laying on the table that <laughs> Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> oh man, that's that's awesome. The, I will say the Necronomicon or the Book of the Dead in this one did look it did look cool. It had like teeth binding. So if you're on uh YouTube you can see what my hands are doing. And I love that you couldn't it open it until you shed blood. Which is, it's a common thing that you have to shed blood on these books. Because in 2013, 
Uh, Eric? 23rd. Eric, yeah. <laughs> I think he, he just opened it, though. Well, he opened it, but then he cut himself yeah. on the book. Yeah. But this so one, this one you needed it. You needed blood to even to, unlock to even it. Open it, yeah. So this is like this is like level four, which is why the T <laughs> level three Necronomicon. Makes sense, yeah. So they say in this one that there are three books, like Necronomicons, which means we now have for sure one and two. Yeah, there's still technically probably a third one out there, which maybe they might use for like another movie. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know how I would feel about that at this moment. Yeah. Well, the good thing is this movie. Isn't set up for a sequel. It's not. It completely closes. So it'd itself. be just another standalone movie. It would. It, this one's full circle, and I loved that about it. Yeah, I it do. doesn't leave any questions or open open characters, which I loved. Um, so the, you get this, and this is when the movie takes the turn. As any Evil Dead fan knows, you're going to get the really quick moving camera pans, and it's going to lead into someone getting possessed. Let's Which? talk. Let's talk about that possession real quick, though. So I was trying to bait you for it, man. Here we are. All right, let's get into it. Let's do it. So we know it's the mom. Who yeah. Gets, anybody that wonders, the mom is yeah. the main, the lady that you see which, in all the clips. Which you know from the trailers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's from in all the clips. Obviously, yeah. we've already spoiled shit, but it's the mom. So my question, like I mentioned last episode, is it random or just the first person to see? So let's say. So it came through the building, the elevator doors open. She was there. I, w- I also think, can you see it? You see, I, everybody reacts to something. Yeah. In every movie that's ever existed. It can't be just a gust of wind. So you see something. You, maybe it's like a, a mist or like an ominous figure. Yeah. I don't think it's like a person. But my question is if someone was walking. I do think it's an entity, though. Well, someone was walking out of their apartment before it got to the elevator. They've hit them instead. Yes. Yes. So in my in my I'm not a prof, I'm not I'm not a writer. I'm not a professional de- demonologist. I think that it's like it's almost like water. It's the path of least resistance, right? <laughs> so unfortunately, but fortunately for the moviegoers, it's always a main character, right? Has to be. But if just just if there was a janitor who had just taken trash out of the trash can <laughs> in front of those elevator doors and just happened to have some headphones on and cut across as that fucking shit's coming th- towards her. She could still be in the elevator like, ah, and he just walks across. Boom, he's possessed. Like, I think it just hits whoever's near where the Necronomicon or the Book of the Dead was open and read from, and it's getting the first human there. So, so I, if you think about 2013, she's in the woods. Yeah. And for some reason already has, like, demons fucking yeah. with her, yeah. which now is kind of like a plot hole, but we'll work through it. Um, this one doesn't. That's the one thing I did like about this. It didn't waste time with, like, imaginary situations. Yeah. Like the possession that happens happens quick. Everything leads up to the mom getting possessed. Yeah. So it makes me think it plays on some type of emotional vulnerability. Which she's in a very vulnerable, vulnerable spot. And so was Mia in 2013. Yeah, but they're also the closest. Yeah. Maybe it, it, it maybe so it, maybe it bases off of who read the words. Like who would that affect most? You know what I mean? Yeah, that could be it. Too. Like, if I read it, would it go after somebody that I love the most? Hmm. Even if they're not near me? Or to go that's against the question. some rando walking down the street? Yeah, would it hit my neighbors? They're innocent bystanders. They sure. probably don't even know I record a podcast in my house. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> they probably think I'm the weirdest fucking dude out there. But yeah, so that's. It, let us know what you guys think, man. I really want some fan involvement with this one, man. I, yeah, think, I think this is a lot of fun. That's always confusing me. Because anybody that's been. You know, Evil Dead came out, I found out, in 1982, the yep. original. Okay. Which is insane to me that it has existed this long, damn near just as long as Halloween. And it's really, I mean, people know it, but it's not one of those, like, go-to classics. It's usually, you know, Nightmare, Friday, Halloween. Yeah, I mean, you'll eventually Hellraiser get fans Evil Dead. every once in a while will pop out of the woodworks. Trash. I agree. I think, I think Hellraiser is just kind of like the disgusting the one. The movies are not good. 
I mean, you get the iconic you get pinhead, but and the um, lament <laughs> configuration. Yeah, mm, but, that's uh, only because of trivia, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so the mom and it was cool. As I kind of like the elevator being a part of this movie. The elevator is its own character. It's like The Shining. Yeah, I think they went definitely Shining. I'm not going to say devil because I fucking hate You like that movie. Oh, yeah. I fucking hate that An movie. M. Night classic. I hate devil. But, I mean, I've watched it a few times. But I did like how in this movie the elevator is almost like it's a, its own demon almost. It's like the the shed yeah. of some of the other evil dads. Yeah. And it has, it gives you that <laughs> call back to the vines. And, and yeah, other, she gets yeah. tied up, thankfully. Um, doesn't cross any of the yeah. inappropriate lines like some of the other ones but uh just gets tied up electrocuted and goes back to the apartment yeah fucked up she dies the quickest yeah out of any prior possessed and evil deads yeah they oh. don't they don't die they just stay possessed for her. she dies yeah so she so maybe dies. her weak and vulnerable state yeah. really i think you're right i think you're onto something yeah. there i'm not agreeing per se but I do think. Well, I will say that with the last two movies. I, okay, yeah, twenty thirteen. The other this, ones, yeah. it's just where it's, the fuck it chooses. Yeah, it is, and it's. I love the quick, the the quick panning camera. I think I don't know who, Rami, Rami, Sam Raimi. Yeah, I think he kind of coined that. I love that. I fucking love it, it's and just, it's very it's Evil just Dead esque, floating through yeah. and just <laughs> boom, and it's there. And I get in the first couple. It's like it'll take like. 38 seconds for it to get to where it needs to be i always love just that shock look on her face like, right before dude, it happens like right before it happens it's cool if windows will open and doors will kick open and stuff um <laughs> yeah so this one's cool because you have you have for the first time it's not fam it well it's not friends it's family but it's all family yeah. and the only <laughs> the, and it's in a fucking rundown apartment building I don't know where. I don't think location matters. I think it's in the L.A. or California Something somewhere. like yeah. It's got to be near a fault line of some sort because there's an earthquake. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's very cool because I think the fact that it's complete blood relatives adds a little bit more to it than just uh, what we've gotten in other ones. The girlfriends, friends, friends bro, yeah. things like that. Brothers, siblings. Yeah. siblings yeah. yeah, all that. We can just say, we just said the same thing three different ways. So we did. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this one is, is like <laughs> mom, aunt, kids. Like, that's it. And then the other thing that I really liked about it is you actually get introduction of other characters. They're not, they're, they're not waste of time. Yeah, it's super quick. Because it's an apartment building, ladies and gentlemen. So that, Right there adds a complete different level of complexity to the situation because it's an apartment building because of the earthquake. You're now stuck on whatever like 30th floor this is yeah, or eighth floor, whatever you can't like there's the, the fire escapes unattainable like and but when they introduce these other tenants in the building, you get to know like the writers or director makeup department whoever really just explain those char characters by the way they looked so you didn't need to waste a bunch of time on them you had a younger one that was in shape prayed a bunch you had the old guy with the shotguns and the beer you had the young ones that had already kind of been there and been like hey can you hang out later so you're already introduced to it which was cool also the dynamic of the kids that are in this movie are very good you have the son that's like a DJ. You have the daughter that's like super against like, I don't know. She's like a protester and shit. And then you have the little girl who's like the innocence of the movie. And then you have the sister who's not so innocent. And the mom who ultimately just got got because she got possessed the quickest. So the, I, how do you, I mean, I feel like the dynamics were done very well. They were for done, an emotional connection to the movie. They were done very fast with the sister. The si yeah. They were doing very well. You find out she's pregnant. Out the gate. Which like you know. Yeah, you know can play because they're going to use that against you. And you can tell she either doesn't want kids or isn't ready for kids yet. She's not super stoked on it. And I think that that has like a huge arc for the whole movie itself. It's the, her character arc going on in the background. Yeah. Yeah. And it's about like being a mother. <laughs> Dude. 
Like, there's a deeper meaning to this movie. Which is fucking nuts that there is. <laughs> and we're not deeper meaning finding no, guys, but, but you're absolutely You can correct. watch it and see. She finds out she's pregnant. She gets there. She just gets possessed. And now she has to be but motherly she, yeah, she, and take care of these fucking kids. But she goes through it, like, I think very rationally, but also, like, how I feel, you know, somebody would go through it. Like, I'm not fucking ready for this. Yeah. But like, I love- I'm not prepared her instinct was always protect the youngest one first. Always. Because she can't little pick herself. Girl. She yeah. can't. Other one, yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, unfortunately. Um, they don't figure it out. But. <laughs> yeah, this fucking siblings. Um, so, <laughs> this movie, uh, whatever this actress's name is, I'm not sure. The mom. She's so good. Oh my god. Her mouth is huge. Yeah, so she has a very good she would have been great in smile. Yeah. But thankfully we got her in Evil Dead Rise. Also, I've been calling it Evil Dead Rises for a minute. <laughs> and then I like looked it up before we did the episode. I'm like, there's no fucking S? Like, <laughs> Damn. I'm an idiot. Is anyway, it rise, is it? Yeah, it's just rise. What's it? Rise? <laughs> All right. Um yeah, this act, and I heard that she's never done horror before. She should do more of it. Like she's she's more known as like a normal act. That sounds fucked up, but she is more known as like a normal actress. Yeah. I didn't research anything. Uh, I know she, she was. She's been on Law and Order SVU. Okay. Yeah, special victims. I, I knew she looked familiar from somewhere, so I had to look it up, and it was I knew her face being familiar from SVU. Okay, you you're SVU guy. All yeah, right. I, I love Law and Order. Gong 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 gong. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this uh, the, I I you know everybody that I, for the for one of the first times in a, a while, uh, especially with new, you can always kind of pick out a bad actor or actress throughout the film. Yeah, I say zero in this movie. I agree. They're all like, good. Every one from the kid to the random uh, tenants. Yeah, they're good. Every, and even the the people at the beginning of the movie that were getting killed, I'd say the boyfriend of that first group is probably the worst. The weakest, yeah. I agree. The weakest, but even then, he's just like, I think that was honestly his character. Yeah. I don't even think it was the actor's he, portrayal he of the character. He also had the least amount of lines. He did, and he was a drone guy, and I don't fuck with drone guys. So <laughs> I just think you're fucking nerd. Drone guy? Fuck you. Yeah, fuck you, dude. Like, woo! If I have to hear that when I'm out in a fucking beautiful lake on a dock and I just, oh, like, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to kill you just off of principle. That's how people that vape. Dude, vapors are the worst. I just, just, I can't like, fuck with it. Like, as much as, like, people complain about secondhand smoke, like, the fact that you're able to just blow bubblegum blueberry pie in my face out of a and I'm just supposed to accept it out of a robot's cock. Yeah. Like, fuck <laughs> you and your fucking vapes, man. Like, all you vapors, Fuck you <laughs> to the fullest. <laughs> I don't like y'all, man. It's the fucking worst. Oh, yeah, I agree 100% with you. That, that don't have shit to do with the movie. Not at all. There's no vapors in this movie, but There's me not. and Jake agree. Vapors suck. Um, they're like drone guys. <laughs> 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 now, if you're like a fucking news anchor or like a news person with a drone, that's cool. But, yeah, I don't fuck with drones. But anyway, um, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> The randomest rant I think of ever on the podcast just happened. I think it is too. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. usually it's like a story that we both have. Yeah. But this was just hatred. Yeah. Like just pure hatred for people that drones, vapes, drones and fuck vapes. Em. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um. How? All right. So the when the mom gets possessed, she dies. But she dies in a neighbor's house. What? Well, she gets carried over to that neighbor's house. The one that prays for her. And she's she, now dead. Oh, she died in her own house. Maybe. Yeah. Well, they she, carried her over there? Well, she, to her room. Because she came back in. She was doing the shit with the eggs on the stove. And then she gets on the ground. Her spine starts doing shit. She vomits that milk looking stuff out. Yeah. Thank you for saying milk. Yeah. 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 Appreciate that. And then they take her to the bed. That's not what it looks like. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but <laughs> you, guys can, you guys can figure that yeah. part out. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a milky like substance. <laughs> milky like substance. Milky like substance coming out of the orifices. <laughs> and they take her to the bed. I love that scene too. When they first try to shut her eyes and they keep Oh, they fucking pop, pop open. open. So that whole scene and then the fly lands on her eye. 
I she, thought and she blinks and looks over. Dude, and I then thought she pops up. Well, I thought before that when he starts praying, I thought shit was about to hit the fan, bro. I did too. I thought that, and they did that very well because we both thought that. Yeah, but it didn't happen. Yeah, like these because are, what you said are, happens right are, after. These that. are two things that shouldn't be happening. <laughs> yeah, you got the guy praying and the lady that's possessed. No, don't do that. That already died. But like Jake said, then she. You know, she can't open her eyes and a fly fucking lands on it. And the sister's like, that's kind of fucking wild. And then she blinks and looks over at her and you're like, shit's about to get crazy. Yeah. Do you feel like this one explains the difference between possessions? Because we had complaints with 2013. Is it the cuts? Is it the puking? Is it like the style of injury? Does it have to be like blood juicy juices shared? Is it like, you know what I mean? So for this movie, it was any type of contact no it was cheese grater okay she doesn't get possessed so it's not any type of contact oh she did it's not any type of contact what the fuck is it then i don't fucking know (laughs) i think it has to be in this one i think it almost has to be a death blow I feel like everybody that got possessed had some form of a death blow. Well, because the whole fucking hallway, that makes sense. Because they were murdered. They were fucking killed. Yeah. But I'm talking about the family. So if we think about the first daughter that gets got. Yeah. How does she get got? Yeah, I only remember that. I don't. That, that's no, it wasn't that bad because she wasn't dead. Did she, she get puked on too? Then she's fucking chewing glass. That was gross. That was gross. And then the son... Somehow? Yeah, well, he got stabbed in the arm. Stabbed. He got vomited all over. He did get vomited. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, unfortunately, the only time we've both seen this is when we first the saw it. The one time. Yeah. And we've also mixed in 2013 in there. Yeah. Um, so, we're, 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 we're doing pretty good. Um, <clears throat> so, it isn't, it, it's not necessarily ju- <laughs> juice related. It is not juice related, no. But it, it, I think. It, well, no, because the, the daughter. She had her down, had the little screw shit. She was about to drill in her eye, but she didn't. And, yeah, I don't know. Something happens to that daughter. <laughs> Something does happen to that daughter. I'm just forgetting it, unfortunately. Son of a bitch. Oh, okay. She gets cut. She gets cut. Yeah. A slight little fucking cut on her eye. But. On is, her cheek. But isn't there some blood sharing that happens there? No, I don't think there is. I feel because like she either touches it or like spits in it or she, like licks it. She or tries like kisses to it. deal with the cut on her face. And next thing you know, it starts like expanding on her face. I remember now. That's right. And then her eyes start to change colors and everything. Yep, yep, yep. yep and then yep. she starts to like vomit and like yeah, bleed so, out. Yeah, that's right. Because in this one, they do constantly go back to the book, which is cool. Well, yeah, check the status. Well, yeah. no, but they they do it in a sense of like the book is fucking flipping the pages itself to yeah. what possession is happening in the film, yeah. which I think is a first, because in this one it shows the different demon types uh-huh. in this film, and it's like the one that had shit coming out of the eyes and nose flips to it when the girl is going through that. Yeah. So I think in this one, as long as you get injured by the main, by the mother, I guess. But who cheese grated the leg? I Mom. thought it was her. She cheese grated the that sister. That was fucking brutal. Dude. Yeah, because if very correctly, the sister's on the ground, the grater next to her, and she hits it with her hand. Homegirl yeah. just catches it. Yeah. And then lands the ass in her leg and pulls it down. I think everybody in the theater had a collective, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, like super gore. I mean, it was, it was done well. It's realistic. Very realistic, but it's not like it goes to like the bone or nothing. Like yeah. she gauzes up her leg for the yeah. rest of the movie. Um, but just the pain you would feel. Oh, I can't even. It imagine. is realistic. I can't even imagine. It's, like you said, it's not super deep or anything. Yeah, it's, it's gonna suck. Realistically, <laughs> it's, it's what that like would feel a, like. It's like a really yeah. shitty boo boo. <laughs> it's like the shittiest of boo boos, honestly. Um, this one, then, but the thing that the thing that tugs at your heartstrings in this one is, uh, as much as you enjoy the uh, it being a mom, kids, and kids and aunt situation, uh, like you don't care about the hallway people at all. So they they actually lock the mom out. And you're like, okay, cool. But shit starts going crazy inside the apartment as well. She's out there doing the fucking thing. 
Killing everybody else. Killing everybody else. And they're watching through. I like the peephole scenes. I do. Yeah. Because, like, I'm kind of scared of looking out of peepholes, just in general. Not scared, but, like, now I am. I would be a little more hesitant to look through a peephole for sure. I feel like now we live also in a society. Like an anti-peephole society. Yeah, to where you always know who's coming by type of thing. So for you to be looking out through a peephole and not knowing what's going on or who's who's out there. And I'm a peephole looker. I am too. You didn't notice that when we were. I noticed that, yeah. Yeah, I'll always hit the people. Yeah, just to make sure. You <laughs> just never to know. make sure, yeah. Um, I was also in a hotel with a complete stranger. So That is true, <laughs> yes. You should always check that fucking people. <laughs> yeah, in case you had some people coming to kill me. <laughs> um, yeah, then, like, uh, I don't know. I, I, <sighs> there's like, there's a lot more emotion in this movie than the rest. Like, you feel worse in this one than any other one. Would you agree or disagree with that statement? I agree, especially more. It's just because it's a fucking family, the One, dude. it is a family. That and they're not are... dislikable. Ca- Everybody that's being affected is like a likable yeah, character. It's a family going through a hard time because the dad just left. <sighs> yeah. They're, like, about they to lo- one... they're about to lose their apartment. The one, the, the aunt comes back out of nowhere pregnant. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's a lot. And as the movie goes, especially like towards the end of it, yeah. when she says to her pretty much how she's going to be just like mom. Mm. It's like, uh, like I mentioned last episode, singing some deep shit you don't want to hear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hear about that. Yeah, you're right, dude. Yeah. Because that's the, even though that person's dead per se, it is still that person. I guess their brain yeah, there's always a part of them in there, man. And they know these things about you. They know your weaknesses, your things you're insecure about. And they play on it. That's like when the mom was <sighs> telling the daughter that their dad was out in the hallway just to open the door. Yeah, I mean, the little... I, th- that's what That was another cool aspect. It's the first time, like, a little, little kid was introduced in the Evil Dead franchise. Yeah. And it shows, like, I, I think any kid could be easily tricked. They're so vulnerable. They're vulnerable, but also they don't understand that, like, just because mommy doesn't look okay or isn't feeling well that's like, still your mom, that's still you. your mom. Yeah. like as adults you're like fuck that bitch yeah i mean we mentioned it last week and then we realized we could save our mom yeah. so we're still like yeah fuck it we'll but this on. one you, you there's no way to save her no if, if this same thing happened yeah dude mom yeah mm-hmm. there's no way to save her at all no also are the rules different per book there they, you know there might be different like i think i don't know if it's rules i think it's demons like, what type of demon you're dealing with. Yeah, because I feel like... Like, that's the only change. I feel like he were to bury her outside, nothing would have changed. No, this one was, like, top-tier fucking yeah. badass. Also figured out that it can get through the ceiling because of a cat. Yeah. I fucking hate cats. So, the fact moment. that they can think so fast and just figure things out like Yeah, that. they're problem solvers. These they deadites are. are fucking problem they, they solvers. They are problem solvers. They are. Yeah. Every move, every deadite's always been a problem solver. But the one thing that the, the one thing that I liked about this is this deadite in the game. Instead of being locked in the basement, she's locked outside of the house. So it was a fun twist. Yeah. But during that time, she's still fucking people up left and right. Yeah. So that was cool. And those characters then become possessed. And like the end of the movie's fine. It's good. I don't. I don't dislike it at all. I don't either. When it became the the all almighty demon creature, I. Okay. I kind of liked it. So, because it showed it, I like the book. I like the page. As far as visually, wasn't feeling it. It looked stupid to me. But the thing is, but think about it. They were smart about it. You never got to see it fucking clearly. True. They kept that shit under wraps. That is true. That's what I like so much about that. But when, is it's not like you're watching the remake of the thing. God, oh, you know man. what I mean, dude. Yeah. Like they did it well, and to make something that corny. I mean, let's be honest. It's fucking three people con- converging into one yeah. via wounds. Yeah. It's not going to look great. Yeah. Which it made me think of what she said earlier in the movie, how she wished that she could cut them open and get inside their bodies so, yeah. they, can, so they can always be together. be together. Yeah. Yeah. They pretty much were, except for the youngest one. Yeah. And it also plays into the whole motherhood thing for her, mm-hmm. getting to a point where you have kids and your kid literally consume you. Yeah. Take over your life. Yeah, the deeper meaning yeah. of this movie are it's, awesome. It's right in her it's fucking right face. in her face, and she kills it immediately. Doesn't even fuck around to find out. No, there's no. That's not but the her hero sister. of this movie is the little girl. 
How so? She turns the fucking chipper on, bro. She is very helpful in that aspect. But also, like, that, the parking garage scene is cool. It is. Usually when you start getting to this point of almost every fucking movie ever. Like, the end of movies, unless it's, like, you know, done pretty well, you got some complaints. One thing I loved, the car started right up. The Exactly. Immediately. So, it didn't fuck around. But yeah. also, you knew from the beginning when they got the pizza, with the, shit, the fucking with the fence. cage yeah. might not work. Yeah. Which is perfect because they've kind of let into it. It's, it's not a minor done. thing. It's a minor thing that yeah. can happen to everyone. Yeah. It's not like. Jugga, 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 That's jugga. like we like, were in um, Texas. Don't you mention that, bro. With, with the gate. It wouldn't. Don't you fucking mention Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Everything about Texas was <laughs> terrible. Like the fact that my our Airbnb that we had was like, hopefully somebody lets you in. We yeah. paid hundreds yeah. of dollars Hopefully you'll to get stay it. here. And they're like, yeah, well, if somebody else... Can, we're coming back from the convention at like 1 a.m. And we're just in a rental just, just like... Waiting. Rrr, 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 rrr. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, we're able to get in every time. So, true. I mean, I guess we true. can't complain yeah, so much. That's true. Uh, but yeah, we get it, though. It makes sense. Yeah. It's not far-fetched. It's not the same fucking car won't start because Ghostface cut some magical fucking cords or something <laughs> or, or Michael Myers is a fucking mechanic now that yeah. can also drive and Man, Jason like, Voorhees like knows how to jumpsuit. unplug the alternator you know it's like sometimes you just let it happen and it's yeah. fine like it's movie magic as we like to call it this makes sense honestly Evil Dead Rise just doesn't do much of that yeah. it doesn't go super far fetched now there's intense scenes there's crazy shit that happens like so when we mentioned The Shining, there's a part where the girls are going down from that floor to the parking garage where it is filling with blood. And I think that it got either the Guinness World Record or the most gallons of blood in a movie. Really? And I think that Evil Dead 2013 technically beat The Shining because of the rain scene at the end. Oh, okay. So because they use that much fake blood in the rain scene, yeah. it's either one or two. Okay. But this one with the elevator definitely got up there because mm. it was filling while they were in it versus yeah. just opening and flowing. And out. I love that when it hits, it, it, the doors explode open. Yeah, so they fall. They yeah. free fucking fall. To the basement, right? But the, the parking garage. Okay. Yeah. From whatever floor they were on, which was pretty high up. Yeah. But the, you're going to, so like, that make, like, physically, I think that makes sense because you're in a, in a pool. Yeah. Like, you're not going to die. Yeah, that's true. It's going to suck. Yeah, because... But it's going to open and you're going to get... Yeah, you're out. not You're not going to, like, hit and fall dramatically. You yeah, you you're, you you're got the like buoyancy of the water. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. It does make sense. So nothing is that far-fetched in this yeah. movie. Now, I'm not some fucking amazing physicist that knows the buoyancy of a human per mile per hour dropped. You yeah. know what I mean? But, like, it makes sense. Small in our, kids, so yeah. In our heads. It's, it's, yeah. She's not a very big woman. True. You know, they're petite they're both people small, in this yeah. movie. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they go through this whole scene in the fucking parking garage that's in fucking tents. And, like I said, they don't show the monster. So, the only monster they're dealing with now is the combination of the mom and two kids. Yeah. But it doesn't, like, show. You usually just see a couple arms and, like, a head. Yeah, you don't seem like full frontal of it. Like I said, around. if anybody's ever seen the fucking thing remake, it's that was one of the worst. Yeah. Like depictions of yeah, it monsters. Was, it, of it, it, it was time. awful. It, it was fucking terrible. But that's what I thought. It does kind of give you that vibe. It does. Yeah. But once she kills it. You got the chainsaw. Yeah. You got the shotgun. Well, of course, you got to have those two things. Though. You got a wood chipper, which unlike Halloween ends... I saw this wood chipper earlier in the movie and thought to myself, that's going to come into play later, but I wasn't mad about it. Okay. I was very mad when I kept seeing the fucking car cruncher in Halloween. They should have like six times. Yeah. It was like the main eventually, character. Yeah. I'm surprised it didn't have its own title card. Yeah, on the credits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wood chipper himself. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they get through that. The, they, they combine to then turn on the wood chipper, shoot it, and then there's a head and they take they take care of it for the most part then they drive out of there then honestly one of the coolest parts in my opinion okay it was it's like how comedy is full circle yeah it's one of my favorite things when you're able to do that so this girl 
was on another floor of the apartment. She was on another floor. Didn't hear anything. She slept through it. She was like, yo, that, that earthquake was crazy last night. Goes down to her car. The situational awareness of, like, most young people. Yeah, she's but on the phone, not paying attention. Looks through her th- rear view mirror and sees a bunch of crazy looking shit. There's a what, car. Would her car not start? No, I think she like looked in her rear view mirror and was like, there's a fucking wood chip or a car and a shit ton of blood. Like, I'm going to check this situation out. No. But, like you mentioned earlier, you can't take that mom and bury her outside to kill this demon. Yeah. You were absolutely correct. They went through the wood chipper, yeah. which is basically a dismemberment yeah. in some capacity. Yeah. I don't know how, like we kind of jokingly mentioned last week, there might be some fine print in this shit. <laughs> the demon wasn't dead. Yeah. And it was, did the fucking fast zoom. It was out of those forms. To the girl that was in the title card. Because she was the nearest person by. I rest my case. That's fucking nuts. I that, rest my case. That theory makes no sense to Full me circle, all. baby. So not only did the movie go full circle, but my argument went full fucking circle. She was just wrong place, wrong time. Wrong place, wrong time, and there's a demon nearby. Damn. Damn. Which means that it doesn't like leaving an area, I guess, because it could have left and probably found a bum on the street. Yeah, like down the street. <laughs> That's not the point. We're not looking for that plot hole right I'm now. I'm just hovering in this fucking parking it's gonna garage. It's going to chill right here. Because it's smart. It Some, is. I mean, someone's going to come to their car at some point. Their car yeah. All right. But that thing possessed, drove to the Yeah. Cabin? Well, that makes sense. How? Because sometimes it does take a little bit of time for it to completely switch. Maybe it knows. Maybe the demon knows. Like, I'm not going to get what I need until this point. So it can, like, hang back. So you know how it can turn itself on and off? Well, I guess you're just kind of, like, sick. But you know how you can turn it on and off where it's like, please help me. Maybe it just did that for the whole car ride. She's like, man, I kind of that was fucking wild. What happened? It feels a little weird. Yeah. Like Gets to the cabin and it's like pukes out milky like substance now we're here let's do and it then fucking triangle cabin fucking scalping dr- drone slicing head ripping shit intense all right yeah so on a scale from one to ten jake what do you give evil dead rise on a scale from one to ten evil dead rise is at eight and a half that's kind of low yes low i do okay i do What'd you rate Evil Dead thir- 2013? I think around the same. Maybe a little less. I hope so. Yeah. This one is significantly better than 2013. It's not that much better, but it, it, is. it is better. Yeah. It is better. Okay, well, I'll say just in case. Cover your ass. 8.7. Because I, I voted 8.8 eight last week. Yeah, I know mine was lower than yours. Yours was lower than mine. Yeah. That's for sure. I think yeah. you went like 8.2, maybe 8 even. I think it's eight even. I think you did go somewhere around eight even. Yeah, so I'm gonna go eight point seven just in case. Eight seven. Yeah, I respect that. What about you? I'm going nine two. Nine I, two. Yeah, I thoroughly wow. enjoyed this movie. Yeah, that's very high. It is very high, but in comparison, like we left that movie, and it's rare that we leave a movie and we're both like, "Fuck yeah." That's true. Like usually we leave a movie and we're like, "What are we gonna?" Yeah, I was gonna talk in the parking lot for like yeah. an hour and a half. Yeah, we didn't have to talk that much. We like didn't. it was that good. It was good, and. You know, we're going off of two weeks of, of not have of watched it, and we yeah. still are able to fly off the top of our heads with all of this content. Fucking almost an hour's worth of an episode. Yeah. If that tells you how good this movie is or not, I don't know if you guys listen to our ratings or not, but I feel like this was a, this yeah. was a phenomenally... Me and my spot on ratings, yeah. I feel like mine are always way better. Uh, way better. I don't think so. Way better. They mine are just, you know... So we can always circle back to Hurt, bud. We the, can always circle back the to The best hurt. in the business, And the sorry. fact that, like, Hurt will always exist. Like, it's never... And for anybody that's a fan of the podcast, you get to this point, like, never let Jake live. Yeah, there. Hurt is never also, Jake, I never think, our Jake third there. or second most viewed episode. So, yeah. You're welcome, guys. Yeah, because everybody was like, this fucking guy's dumb. <laughs> 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 this Josh guy gets it. <laughs> Check out Hurt. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man ah oh, this was this was good it was good i enjoyed this episode it was one of the most fun i've had in a while yeah talking about something new i have to get super upset about it 
That was nice. That was refreshing. Um, are we cool with next week's episode idea? Let's do it. Tell All me. right. So next week, we are nowhere near this movie, but uh, we're going to go ahead and cover Tusk. <laughs> <laughs> If anybody's seen it, uh, if you know the walrus, uh, we we will be covering Tusk, written and directed by, what's his name? Kevin Smith? Smith. Yeah. I'm excited about this one. I am. Uh, We'll see. We'll bring good content on it, but that gives you guys a little bit of time to prepare, watch watch it, it, check it out. That way, you know, we're not spoiling a movie from so long ago. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Um... Yeah, that was fun. Um, big shout out as always to our main supporters. Jeff Balance, who does our design work. Lucky Riggs, who does our intro and outro music. Cool thing though. I went to a concert on Friday night, last Friday night. And I actually bumped into Jeff Balance and Lucky was playing the show. <laughs> and I was wearing my J Squared horror hoodie. It was awesome. It was super cool. I forgot to hit Jacob so he didn't get to experience yeah. it with me. <laughs> Damn. Cuz I'm an <laughs> asshole. No, it was, it was it was super late and like it was it's like a super shitty bar. Uh but that's like Jake's favorite thing yeah. in the whole wide world. I should have hit I him love up. shitty yeah. bars. Yeah. I should have hit him up. But it was super cool. So Jeff, Lucky, thank you guys so much for supporting us since day 1. You guys have been great. A uh, big shout out to Trademark Printing. Trademark Printing has done all of our printing needs for the most part. They knocked out a really cool banner for the convention we have coming up in September. And it's we 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 love all the work you guys do. It's super cool. Thank you guys so much. Uh, big shout out to Jake for being the world's greatest co-host. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> comment down below. Jake is the world's greatest co-host, and Jake will send you an autographed picture of himself. <laughs> <So> <laughs> don't forget, comment. Jake is the greatest co-host down below. Jake will send you out some Mister Divine specials. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you guys don't want that. Hey, hey, just remember, if you comment down below, <laughs> Jake is the greatest co-host. He has to. It's 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 binded. It's legal at this point. For for the two of you that get this far, then yeah, sure. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Everybody gets this far. You're right. Yeah, everybody gets this far. Four, I'm sorry, guys. It's at least six. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, man, thank you so much for always being fucking awesome. Thank you. Bringing some great content. Um I'm having so much fun doing this podcast, man. It's, I am it's, too. It's so much fucking fun. Yeah. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying it. If you get to this point, you know, let us know if you like us or not. <laughs> I mean, if you got to this fucking point, you obviously like us a little bit. Clearly, yeah. Um, next week, Tusk. No, no real events coming up. The convention's quite some time out. We'll start pounding that into your guys' heads once we get closer to September. Um, so yeah, this is the J Squared Horror Podcast. I'm Josh. And I'm Jake. You guys have a great week. And remember, it's hip to be squared. <laughs>